Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this exciting event today. We're gonna to be discussing some of DOE's uh, exciting plans for freight efficiency and have a great group here. Uh, of course, leading off our event today, uh, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you very much for, uh, for being here and uh, leading this event. Also, Acting Assistant Secretary of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, Kelly Speaks Backman. Uh, and then very important um, from the uh, freight community, Mike Grove, Executive Director for NACFI, and also principal with Rocky Mountain Institute. Joel Morrow, who is a driver with uh, Hoger Transportation, and Clark Reed, who is a driver with Nest Farm Transportation. And I'm your, your host for today. I'm keeping track of time and moving things along. Michael Barabee, I'm the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary for Sustainable Transportation. So without further ado, please uh, let me hand the mic over to Secretary Granholm for um, a, a very exciting announcement we'll be making. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Michael. And thanks to everybody who is joining us out there. Um, so we have arrived at a moment that is equal parts exciting and urgent for the nation. It's exciting because there is so much opportunity to claim for example, America's share of the global clean energy market, uh, which means creating millions of jobs for our workers. It's exciting to direct the benefits into communities that have been left behind. And it's urgent because we cannot delay in waging a full out war on the climate crisis. And the transportation sector is one of the key fields of battle. So um, the transportation sector, is responsible for our largest share of greenhouse gas emissions. And to reach our goal of net zero carbon economy by 2050, then we absolutely have to figure out a way to drive those emissions down. And today we have two funding opportunities that are focused on the two biggest sources of emissions in the transportation sector, which is freight and passenger vehicles. So um, before being energy secretary, I was the governor of Michigan. So I know a little bit about how important cars and trucks are to our economy. So let's take heavy trucks. We move 73% of domestic freight, about $10.8 trillion worth of value in shipments on these big rigs. And all told, they support about 3 million jobs between production and operation. And if you look at passenger vehicles, well, put aside sales and manufacture, just think about how many of us rely on cars to get to and from work every day and think how many cars will be back on the road as soon as we take more control over COVID. So in my last year's as governor, Michigan started to build the guts of car 2.0, the electric vehicle, and the guts of it being the battery for that electric vehicle. So we showed and we continue to show that we can make these vehicles more efficient and less reliant on fossil fuels. And if we double down on that work, we can make huge progress toward the goals of zeroing out carbon emissions and by the way, creating jobs as well. So that's why I'm so excited about these funding opportunities that I'm announcing today. So first up is the next phase for our super truck initiative. So since 2009, DOE has worked with truck makers that cover virtually all of the US market to drastically boost freight efficiency for semis. And within seven years, Volvo and Daimler and Cummins Peterbilt and Navistar, they had blown past our initial goal of a 50% improvement in fuel efficiency. All five Super Truck 2 projects are on track to hit their goals of more than doubling miles per gallon. Today, we're announcing Super Truck 3, offering up to $100 million for projects that push the envelope even further through the electrification of the vehicle and hydrogen and fuel cells. And not just for semis, we are, this funding actually has been authorized by Congress. It's subject to follow up by the appropriators. They all support this effort. So it's super, it's awesome to be able to announce it. We want the all kinds of trucks. We want the garbage trucks in your cities. We want the delivery trucks that have been, that are being used to drop packages at your home. We want the tow trucks that you call in an emergency. Really any medium or heavy duty truck on the road that run, we want them to run on alternative or cleaner energy. And so that's announcement number one. 
along with Super Truck 3, we're also announcing the Low GHG Vehicle Technologies Funding Opportunity, the Low Greenhouse Gas Emission Vehicle Technologies Funding Opportunity. And for that, we're putting up nearly $63 million to achieve two goals. First, increasing access to electric vehicle infrastructure. We're setting up uh, and we will support a range of community demonstration projects, include putting charging stations within say apartment buildings, which are often very difficult to put charging stations into. So these projects will show us the most equitable way to reach the goal that President Biden has laid out in the American Jobs Plan, which is to add 500,000 new public EV charging stations nationwide. So the second goal is that we wanna back projects to develop new technologies for car emission reductions like higher efficiency engines. So to recap, we're talking over $162 million subject again to appropriations, which we know we have the support of. And that money is to develop clean transportation technologies for vehicles of all sizes. It is a powerful salvo in our war on the climate crisis and to be able to bring to bear these new technologies here in America for our people, for our drivers, for our freight and for jobs. So to tell us about this uh, potential impact, I'm really thrilled to introduce two very special guests, Joel Morrow and Clark Reed. And two. these are two truck drivers who are actually already behind the wheels of rigs that are running on upgrades that have been created through this super truck initiative. Joel and Clark, thank you so much for being here. And if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. You good? Absolutely. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Great. So let me start with Joel. Joel, tell us, first of all, what are the benefits that you get as a driver from these energy saving features on your trucks and trailers? Yeah, energy saving features are, are great for the driver. Um, one very specific way that I can think of that, that maybe not a lot of people think about, we have a, a solar battery air conditioner for the truck. So when we are parked at a shipper or receiver and it's 100 degrees outside, we don't have to idle the truck and uh, it works very, very well. It's very quiet. Um, some of the alternatives we used in the past, they, they had a, an actual diesel powered motor to run the air conditioning system while we were parked or we idled the main engine so we can eliminate all that. It eliminates a lot of noise, a lot of pollution. It's very quiet. It's, it's great when the driver needs to sleep. Um, one of the other technologies I can think of that really benefits me directly as a driver, uh, kind of the, 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 the buzzword out there right now is called downspeeding technology. And this allows the truck to have very high efficiency with, with very good productivity. We are regulated by the hour and paid by the mile. So productivity and efficiency go hand in hand. And in the past, we that marriage was never there. And today, because of programs like Super Truck, um, now we're really starting to see the productivity and the efficiency kind of walk hand in hand. And that's a great thing for the driver. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks, Joel. And thanks for coming to us from your office, <laughs> Clark. <Sure. laughs> um, let me ask you, Clark, uh, my understanding is that you're among the first to drive with uh, these new features. So tell us a little bit about that and how uh, technologies might help you perform. Sure. Well, first, I'm going to piggyback on something that Joel said. Um, one of the technologies that I was first to try, at least with Newsbomb, was the solar and the, the battery powered APU. So those two do work hand in hand together very, very well, and they improve quality of life. But they also improve the efficiency of the truck, right? So we're not burning diesel fuel while we're sitting there staying comfortable. And we're saving the environment by not having to dispose of as many batteries because it, they actually extend the battery life with the solar panels. So uh, being able to test that out and prove out that that works, when we first started testing it, you didn't see as many solar panels out there and now they're becoming accepted. So being able to test that and prove that that is something we can bring to market and that can actually improve efficiency and quality of life, that's a, that's a, that's a great thing. Some of the other things that we test, uh, not only improve efficiency, but safety. So the forward facing radars that were just uh, something to warn us that something was there is now something that through testing has come to uh, improve efficiency by 
helping us maintain distances so we're not breaking as often that consumes fuel when you have to reaccelerate. So all these things add up pretty quickly and being able to test them and prove them. And then I like pushing them just a little bit further to see what we can get out of them a little bit more. It's just uh, it's a win-win for everybody, I think. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this funding will actually bring forward oh, from this Clark, point. That's awesome. I mean, you, you and Joel, what great uh, spokespeople you are because you guys obviously have the experience on the ground, really appreciate you sharing that with us. And I know you're going to um, be doing a little bit more of that in the program here. Uh, I, I also want to acknowledge we've got Mike Roth from the uh, North American Council for Freight Efficiency and the Rocky Mountain Institute. So Mike, can I bring you into this conversation too? Um, Super Truck has developed these great next generation uh, technology, obviously now being used in the trucks. And I'm wondering, do you think the next big, big thing will be something like electrification or hydrogen or maybe something else. Yeah, well, Secretary, it's been wonderful to be here. And, you know, I go back with the super truck program all the way to my days at Navistar in the middle 2000 when I was on the um, 21st Century Truck Committee. So it's fun to see, you know, us go from very little uh, funding for these trucks to super truck one, two, and now three. So congratulations to the DOE. You know, as we look forward, uh, what technologies? I think absolutely battery electric trucks. I mean, they have are so exciting. Uh, they're elegantly simple. So, you know, to have um, the emission levels that we have in these diesel trucks, it's pretty extraordinary, but it requires a lot of technology like after treatment and other things. And the diesel truck has become a rather complex and, you know, with hy hybrids and even hydrogen hybrids, you know, they become a little more challenging, but the battery electric truck is the thing that, uh, that I'm looking forward to over the next few years. And it starts with smaller urban trucks and will find its way into the, uh, the larger semis. And, you know, however far that battery will take uh, that truck, both really in range and also sort of figuratively in total cost of ownership will be um, the measure of, of how much the other technologies we might need. Very exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting. Obviously, the batteries have got to be um, big and we got to figure out over long distances, the charging issues, but it's just super exciting to think about electrifying uh, this sector. So thank you, Mike and Joel and Clark. It's so exciting to hear about these uh, technologies in action. I can't wait to see them firsthand once we're through this pandemic. All of us at DOE and all of our viewers today are really appreciative of the critical work that you do to keep our economy moving, really, and your commitment to do it su sustainably. So with that, I'll turn things back over to Michael. Thank you very much, Secretary Granholm. And uh, it is a, a great announcement. I love uh, your comment of doubling down, right? This is the third time, so we're doubling on another doubling four times. <laughs> we have big, ambitious goals, but as you said, we, um, we have big, big needs, and uh, it's very serious business to get this done. Uh, so again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, I do want to transition to a video that um, will give a little bit of an overview of some of the amazing work being done by NACP and kind of uh, uh, pictures worth a thousand words, videos worth a thousand more. So if we can transition to that video now. NACFI's Run On Less series is a place for the best of the best to demonstrate what they're doing around high efficiency. One fleet executive shared that Run On Less has become a way for the trucking industry to tell our own story about burning less fuel, saving money, and emissions. By 2016, the NACFI team had studied over 80 technologies for improving freight efficiency, and we began to wonder, what is the best efficiency out there? If fleets operated most of the technologies using their best truck drivers, that created the Run On Less series by NACFI and RMI. And how cool has it been? With two runs so far held in 2017 and 2019, 17 trucks and drivers have covered over 100,000 miles, nearly 200 truck days of operation, and literally tens of millions of lines of data have been created. 75 videos have been produced and over 70,000 page views on runonless.com and on and on. In summary, Run On Less is a real world demonstration with actionable data and industry discussions. Real freight, real routes, real trucks and drivers. It includes data from the trucks, storytelling via videos with drivers, fleets, truck builders, and others. And each run is a year long effort culminating in significant learnings via a detailed report. 
Now in 2021, the Run On Less series becomes electric. Here, the best of the best early pioneers in zero emission trucking will be on display. With 13 fleets and truck builders who are deploying all electric trucks in North America right now. Highlights will include fleet and OEM profiles detailing all aspects of what is needed to haul freight with light, medium, and heavy duty battery electric vehicles. An electrification education boot camp covering 10 topics critical to successful electric truck deployment. Real world data will be presented on a live dashboard during the three weeks of operation. And there will be multiple convenings at live events as the run progresses and concludes and much more that will emerge as we continue our planning and execution. Today in MACV's next run on less. This one will truly be electric. Excellent video, Mike. Here, I'll, I'll hand it over to you to maybe uh, share a little bit more. Yeah, there won't be quite the fun music in the background um, for, for, for the next little bit here, but um, thank you, Michael. And it is really exciting to be here and, and talk through, uh, you know, this DOE super truck announcement and really the uh, both of these FOAs because um, it's going to take a lot to progress electric vehicles across both passenger cars, buses, trucks, medium and heavy and, and so forth. So uh, this is, um, you know, truly an interesting time. And, and it, it, it's funny because, um, you know, it, it, some on watching might ask, well, why NACFI along here at the DOE super truck? But, you know, kind of the super truck programs and this run on less effort of NACFI and RMI were kind of un, unintentionally linked. And um, that, that's exciting. And, and let, me, let me explain, I think. So back, you know, in the 2009-10 timeframe when Super Truck 1 started and those te four teams went after it and, and were really working to get things done, as they deployed their prototype truck and started to show some big numbers, right? So they were showing 12, 13 mile per gallon at that 65,000 uh, GVW target. Uh, it became obvious that some of those technologies were really ready for market now. Um, others still haven't come to fruition, you know, waste heat recovery might be a good example of something that was on a lot of the super truck one programs and then two, and, um, you know, just hasn't become, had been a, you know, a cost of ownership to really get into the trucks, but so much has. And so, you know, kind of then fast forward to our first run on less, which was in 2017, Joel and, and Clark were both drivers in that. And we had, um, seven truckers who were cross country. Um, in September of 2017, over 50,000 miles, they did 10.1 mile per gallon, you know, at various different, um, you know, freight levels, but in some really challenging times, we had two hurricanes that hit during that, during that month, um, ironically, and uh, they just did a great job. So though that 10.1 and the, and the fuel economy that these two guys do for their companies every day just wouldn't have happened without the super truck program. Now, some may have, but super truck developed the tech, helped along with the manufacturers, develop the technologies, and they took it and put it into production. And, um, and, and those features came in sort of one, on, one by one over the course of the last decade. And, and here we are with some pretty phenomenal um, fuel economy on the trucks and freight efficiency. So great job. And that, that funding was really important. Um, so run on less, we're kind of almost like a, a validator of, uh, of the super truck efforts um, and all the efforts of the whole enterprise, whether it's truck builders, transmission manufacturers, uh, and on and on. So that kind of brings us um, to today and where we are right now. And, uh, you know, going forward uh, again, I mean, here's another, I think, um, recognition that we're both on the right track and the whole industry is on the right track. Uh, the DOE in this FOA, as the secretary said, is expanding into lot, a lot more trucks, not just the heavy tractors and trailers, but light, medium, and heavy. Uh, and we're also, and, and so is uh, 
uh, run on less electric. So we will have, as you saw there, some participants with panel vans and some smaller medium duty electric trucks. And then we also have um, the, uh, the uh, technologies themselves and the solutions themselves, the second piece, and that we're using all battery electric trucks and DOE's funding various different alternatives from electric and, and others. Uh, and then lastly, looking at the freight as a real ecosystem, right? So how does the freight move um, from the manufacturer, from the port all the way to, to the consumer is, is really important. So um, really thrilled about how that's gonna, gonna go forward. And um, really, I wanna now bring in uh, back Joel and, and Clark for uh, a couple of questions because you know, I work with these guys quite often and um, you know, there's a lot more to add to the story than what they were, were sharing there for a few minutes. So. Um, Joel, if you don't mind, I'd like, I'd like you to go first. Um, you know, Joel, you drive a lot, but you also are responsible for all the technology decisions at Ploger. And, um, you know, I think it's something like a 50, 60 truck fleet. So tell us a little bit about how you do both and why do you keep driving with all the challenges of these other jobs, uh, you know, of, of spec and trucks and so forth. And then, you know, expand upon the technologies that the manufacturers are bringing you right now. Sure. Just one real quick point I'd like to make, and, and you had mentioned um, Super Truck is kind of a validation platform for technologies. And I just want to make the statement of how important that is, especially for small fleets and owner operators. And a lot of times that's missed. A lot of these high risk, high reward technologies um, are are essential to, to, you know, hit our environmental goals and hit our transportation industry goals that we want as far as productivity but validating that the technologies are ready for the real world, I think is just super important. I think early on when we had the emission system truck rollout, um, we didn't really have that validation. And you know, a, a lot of smaller fleets and owner operators kind of took it on the chin out in the field. And I, I just want to say how important it is for programs um, like super truck and organizations like NACFI to validate technologies before they go out into the world. So we've got some confidence once we get them out here that, that they're ready for the real world and that we're not going to have to kind of back engineer things. Um, you know, sort of beyond that, the reason I like the drive is to stay in touch with reality. Um, you know, when, when you, step out of the truck a lot of times it's really hard to get a clear understanding of what's actually happening out on the road and and so I like to stay engaged um, to me it's the only way to truly know what's happening um, you've got to be a hands-on to understand what's going on out in the field and and that's why I, I stay engaged and drive as much as I can um, uh, you, you know, I, I'm still doing around 100,000 miles a year, um, you know, down a little bit from what I used to do, but uh, I'm still very much engaged and in the truck on a regular basis. That's amazing, Joel. You know, as this video rolls, um, two technologies I'd kind of like to ask you about. That is, you know, we saw both the tractor and the trailer um, axles lifting. Um, so why is that technology important to you? And then the, as we're seeing here, some of these driver coaching aids um, how do you use those? So if you could work, if you could respond to both of those. Sure. Liftable axles. Um, it's a great way to um, uh, save energy simply because in the, the typical American duty cycle, we're not always hauling 80,000 pounds. And oftentimes we don't need to have all those axles on the ground, which creates an energy drag on the truck. Um, so lifting axles is a great way to improve efficiency um, and it's relatively inexpensive to, to, to put lift axles into service. Um, the, the, the coaching aids, the in-cab coaching is just probably one of the best tools in the industry right now. Drivers can impact fuel efficiency in excess of 30%, just behavioral. And so being able to get instant feedback in the cab and coach the driver to, to let them know if, if they're doing things right, um, especially as technology gets, gets more and more advanced, um, sometimes there's actually differences between certain uh, manufacturers of trucks and how they need to be driven. And these in-cab coaching devices really help the driver um, achieve maximum efficiency. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Joel. Hey, Clark, um, where are you today? I'm always interested. You seem to be everywhere all the time. Where are you today? Uh, today I'm in Tiffin, Iowa, right off of I-80. So it'd be uh, Eastern Iowa. 
Yeah, yeah, very good. So, um, you know, Nussbaum has maybe three, 350 tractors, if I remember. So, but kind of small, but clearly a fleet that wants to be on the leading edge here. So, um, uh, I know you got a new truck recently, uh, and I'm guessing it has some more of the technologies on the truck. You know, you don't have to go into big details, but tell us about uh, how it is moving from an older truck to a new one, or is there a lot of change? I think with, with super truck and other things, you're probably seeing a, a lot of new stuff come your way. How do you deal with it? Well, there's a learning curve, definitely. Um, the trucks, the, the new technology, you, you have to relearn it all the time um, and learn what it can do, like I had said before. And, and so, I, so the truck I'm in now, has a new engine, new transmission. The whole drivetrain is new. So the shift points are different. The engine is different. It, how it operates and how it wants to operate. Like Joel said, from manufacturer to manufacturer, there are differences in the equipment. So you have to learn how to drive that truck and you have to learn uh, where it's going to do its best. So that's what we do when we're testing out this new uh, new technology is we, we work it out. We make sure it's feasible and some of the stuff that that new truck does just really astounds me. And I like to say either, either it's worth working perfectly or it's not working at all because some of the stuff that it does is seamless. You don't notice it and other things you do notice. So paying attention to what it's doing, what it's telling you, that's, that's key to all of it. I think Mike. Yeah, very good. And so, oh, you know, as you look back at um, the, the technologies have, that have come, uh, what would be some of your hopes from super truck three? I mean, you, yeah, obviously, you probably aren't going to be driving a, a, a light duty or medium duty cargo van. You're going to stay in the big, uh, big semis, heavy duty tractors. But, um, you know, when you look forward at some of the really transformational stuff, I mean, maybe in your career, you'll still have a hydrogen fuel cell truck in your future, um, Clark. So w what do you want the manufacturers and the DOE to do now to better prepare us for that later? Well, that's a pretty good question. I you know, I look forward to seeing what they come out with, but past that, I always like seeing where that technology that they just come out with, where it goes in five or 10 years. So we spoke earlier about the solar panels, but you never ever saw them on a truck and now they're becoming accepted and the benefits that that brings on just increases and increases and increases. So I'd like to see them focus on the little things that can turn into big things, right? So solar panels now, might turn into a into a bigger thing, especially with the the electric. Finding a way to adopt those together, maybe I'm I'm not quite sure, but I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing the advancements and then how those progress a long time, and not just in the big trucks, but in the little trucks too. And if you look at the way they've advanced now, um, this big truck I'm driving now gets better fuel economy than a lot of the straight trucks did just 10 years ago. So. I'm just looking forward to seeing these efficiencies increase and driver comfort increase along with it because that goes hand in hand. Yeah, great. So my last question for you before I turn it back over, you know, there's like three and a half million truck drivers across all these segments of, you know, garbage and long haul and, and pickup and delivery, et cetera. You know, and we've got, it's been great having both of you guys on this, but you know, you're kind of those that really pay attention to efficiency or something. What's your message to other truck drivers out there or the fleets and, and uh, the whole network around, um, you know, doing better with respect to burning less fuel? Well, the biggest thing I, I tell a lot of people this is learn how to manage your technologies. Uh, you can just get in the truck and drive it, or you can get in the truck and manage it and drive it. So these, all these technologies on a truck, like the adaptive cruise and the lane keep assist and all that stuff, you can complain about it or you can actually learn to use it to your advantage to save fuel, to keep yourself safer, to keep the environment cleaner. All those things work hand in hand. So learn how to manage that truck. Just don't drive it. Learn it. That's great. Great. Probably the best of you I can give. Very good advice, Clark. And thank you, Joel. And back to you, Michael. Well, thanks, Mike, uh, Joel and Clark uh, for, uh, for, for the comments and insight. And uh, Mike, uh, just a quick question. You know, when you talk about electrification, I know science is confusion about electrification, battery electrification, uh, hydrogen fuel cells, you know, just, could you clarify that for folks a little? 
Well, yeah, I can. And, you know, these trucks have been diesel for forever, right? Um, and we're entering a time where there could be or there are a lot of solutions available from natural gas to even renewable natural gas, renewable biodiesels, hybrids and all kinds of things. So, uh, you know, there will be a lot of choices for manufacturers and the fleets um, going forward. But, you know, at the end of the day, we think that, um, you know, battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell as they continue to be developed and we figure out all of how they're, they're going to operate, um, you know, will be the predominant ones as we enter into that and, and necessary ones as we enter into the 2040, 2050, um, you know, carbon free transportation that the secretary talked about earlier. So, you know, battery electric trucks, hydrogen fuel cell is using the hydrogen fuel cell to extend an electric truck and have those batteries be much smaller and get longer range. So, um, you know, we'll just see how much of the market is um, ultimately uh, uses battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell, but we expect over the de next decades, that that'll be the two big solutions for, for trucks. Excellent. Well, we'd like to take some, uh, some Q and A and I'd like to hand it over to assistant secretary speaks backman to uh get us started with that thanks michael hey guys how's it going this Good. has been a pretty cool day so far and it's uh not even noon here on the east coast um joel i i just wanted to say i really appreciated your point about field validation uh that we're doing here in this super truck especially you know for the small and medium-sized companies it's really um awesome to hear that that what we're doing is kind of taking the risk out for companies for whom that might be a make or break. So just really appreciated that feedback. And uh, to both of you, Joel and Clark, I also really appreciate your approach to being hands-on and engaged in this. I think um, part of why we do these funding opportunities like Super Truck is really to make sure we're getting out in the field and see what works practically, like making sure that the feed, the, making sure that we take in that feedback because uh, it's key to making sure that we bring others along with us in this transformation to burn less fuel. So I just wanted to start off just by saying thank you so much for uh, the work you're doing and for joining us here today. Um, I had a couple of questions for you. Um, the first one, of course, because we just made this announcement, I'm so excited about, um, just wanted to hear your, your reactions to today's announcement. Like, you think, um, uh, do you think this is gonna get around? You think we're gonna get some uh, traction on this? I personally think so, um, especially, you know, out in the real world, when, when you're down at the grassroots level with the owner operators and the small fleets that make up the majority of, of trucks on the road, the validation that we spoke of is so critically important. Um, you know, very early on when we rolled out emissions, a lot of small companies took it on the chin. It put, it put some companies out of business. Um, so validation using super truck as a validation platform is just absolutely critically important. And, you know, small fleets and owner operators, their, the way they remain competitive in the marketplace is strictly through efficiency where some of the bigger fleets use an economy of scale model to, to stay competitive. So, you know, we're bringing these high risk, high reward technologies into the marketplace now we're validating them to make sure that when they come out and, and you know your average owner operator, one truck guy buys that truck, he can have some confidence that the truck's gonna perform. It's not gonna be in the shop. He's not gonna have to reverse engineer everything and try to fix things. So um, just a super important program that I would hope would get a lot of support, especially from that blue collar grassroots uh, group that makes up the majority of the trucking industry. Cool. Clark? Uh, I agree. Uh, as usual, Joel's a smart guy. I agree with him <laughs> on that. Um, you, getting this stuff out in the field and, and making sure it works so that when it does come up to scale, like he says, the average owner operator that's got one or two trucks can go, I know this technology is going to work. It's going to save me money. It's going to save the environment. All that stuff's important. So knowing that this moving forward, this technology is proven and it's viable. I think it's important for not just big fleets. It's important for little guy, especially because he's his money's tight. He's got to watch it. So yeah, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you were talking a little bit earlier about the solar APUs and like how that started taking on and like really becoming a trend. And you're seeing more and more of those uh, in the field these days. I'm wondering, like, especially with COVID, the last year um, we've been, you know, seeing a change in freight movement, like more shorter trips and hub and spoke 
kind of systems. I'm wondering um, if you guys have thoughts on what kind of new opportunities we should be paying attention to for Super Truck 4. Um, and, you know, what do you think this presents in terms of trucking uh, opportunities uh, for, for improved energy use? And I, can I try to take that, Kelly? I, yeah. I, uh, first of all, Super Truck 3 has been on the street for what, 35 minutes or 45 minutes, and you're already <laughs> yeah. talking about four, so good <laughs> job there. Um, well, well done. Um, I, I think absolutely we're seeing a change in goods movement to smaller trucks, to more dedicated routes. Uh, we've studied it, and so has a lot of uh, good projects that have been funded out of the DOE have looked at it. So, you know, I get frustrated sometimes when people say trucking and they think only um, heavy-duty tractor trailers. There's a lot more to our goods movement, all the way uh, down through medium-duty to, um, to panel vans and vans. And, and technologies around connectivity and automation and other things are, are, are really helping to move to hub and spoke and, and shorter runs. And, and we actually have this challenge of, of e-commerce that sort of exploded with the pandemic. So all of that's you know, a, a critical reality of the industry, sometimes missed, sometimes we just keep focusing on, we, we need to focus on the heavy tractor trailers, but that was particularly inspiring when I read what was coming with Super Truck 3 to be more holistic, you know, and that approach was, was really a good thing and, and uh, very important as we move through the next five years, I think. Just to kind of add on to what Mike's saying, you know, um, shorter runs with heavy duty diesel engines represent some fuel efficiency challenges. Um, they're just not as efficient in stop and go environments. And this is where electric vehicles really shine and why it's so critical to get infrastructure built out to um, really help facilitate the, the move to the the hub and spoke, you know, the, the long distance stuff is probably going to be diesel for quite a while yet, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing, but, you know, that short regional operation, local P&D type stuff, it should absolutely be electric. We just need the infrastructure build out to make that happen. Yeah, I agree. I think that, the, you know, NACFI talks about uh, the messy middle where we transitioned from mostly diesel to, you know, more of the electric uh, vehicles. And I think that uh, being able to fund some of these things that make that messy middle a little less messy is probably a good thing. So I'm that I agree. I, I think this will be a good thing for our, for all of us. I'm stealing that statement, uh, Clark. The messy middle. Oh, you need to give Nacky that credit. Mike Roth, I think he came up with that. <laughs> yeah, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. We're we're you know we're really uh, we're really excited about this transition as you could. You could hear in uh, the secretary's uh, remarks, and um, I'm just, I'm thrilled. Like I know we're trying to move towards electrification for certain applications, but there is going to be a messy middle, um, and we need to work on that. I think uh, how we do, how we make that transition, and still make progress at the same time. So Kelly, and, and, and how this infrastructure, um, you know, is really the next big thing for electric actually both passenger cars and trucks. Uh, we're getting the trucks, we're getting the cars coming, we're figuring out where they need to be put in place. But, you know, how, how and maybe it's in the FOAs, but how are, how's the DOE going to help with that infrastructure piece, um, you know, in parallel to the equipment being, um, being matured? Yeah, you know, well, we definitely want to make sure we're, deplo we're deploying the, the needed infrastructure all over the country to benefit um, all of America, not just specific states. And so in one of the FOAs we announced today, the low greenhouse gas vehicle FOA, we have a topic specifically focused on EV charging. Um, again, it, it may not be a, appropriate yet for the heavy duty, but we want to start that infrastructure planning uh, right away. So we ho we're hoping to work with communities, like directly with the communities, both uh, through this uh, funding opportunity, as well as like through other things that we do, like the Clean Cities Coalition Network to ramp up our EV infrastructure deployment. We're going to, you're going to hear a lot from this administration and from Department of Energy, especially about deployment, deployment, deployment. We're ready to move on this. And that's not just on, you know, grid side, electricity side. This is all about transportation as well. So pretty exciting. Um, ultimately, uh, we need to have, we're going to have at least 500,000 electric uh, chargers deployed across the nation by 2030. That's our goal. 
I think one of the other things that's really exciting about the FOA is the fact that we're including hydrogen and fuel cell as part of, specifically, we're interested in those technologies. The infrastructure there is, um, you don't have the Lake Beauty side pulling quite as much, but we envision through this super truck initiative to get some of that uh, hydrogen refueling infrastructure out there. Maybe it's a little more in the demo phase at this point, but that's really important as you know, um, you guys mentioned to get that first experimentation and the learnings out there because that will be a key part of the future of long term. Infrastructure seems to be the very much the limiting factor as far as electric heavy duty vehicles. You know, we like to think that Plover Transportation, that we're, we're a cutting edge fleet. and We would love to deploy a couple electric vehicles in our local operations, but there's simply no infrastructure to support that. And so we're kind of on the sidelines just watching you know, certain areas of the country that have a little bit of in infrastructure, you know, deploy trucks and, and our hands are basically tied because of the lack of, of infrastructure out there to support heavy duty electric vehicles. I hear you. Um, and, and that's why it's so important, like organizations like DOE can help work across the transportation and the electric side to kind of bring those parts together to make sure that we have infrastructure across the whole, uh, the whole U.S. And I think, uh, you know, super truck was so successful because it required a tractor and trailer to be built and, and, and be out on the road, not only to do the fuel of freight efficiency testing, but also to do some of that early validation that Joel and Clark both, both desperately talked about. So let, let, hopefully we'll take that same attitude. It sounds like we are with the infrastructure side, because there's still a lot of challenges with how fast, how we manage the charging, the grids resiliency, all of that can sort of be tested a little bit through these, um, you know, I'll be at one-off deployments, but really important early efforts through through these kind of items. So very good. Totally agree. Well, um, I, looking at the time here, we're getting close to uh, close to our end. Um, I, I really want to thank uh, Mike, you for helping bring, uh, bring Joel and, and Clark and, and all of us together. Uh, I'd like to maybe offer up to uh, the Assistant Secretary kind of some final, final words to close us out. Thanks, Michael. And, and thanks, guys. Um, and thanks, everyone who joined us. This has been such a great event. It's really fun to see all these technologies being used in the trucks. And I'm really excited to see what Super Truck 3 is going to be uh, bringing along to us. I encourage everybody to check out our new two funding opportunities that can be found on our Vehicle Technologies Office website. And that's it. I just have a great afternoon, everybody. We're moving into the afternoon, at least on the East Coast. So uh, Thanks for joining us and have a great day, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.